What's up, everybody? My name is Abby Griffith, and I am the owner and founder of Clarity Fitness, and I am here to have breakfast with you, sprinkles falling everywhere, as well as our special guest, Courtney Plush of Courtney Plush Nutrition. She is brilliant. She is an incredible nutrition counselor and dietitian, and she also is all about everything in terms of self-care with food, having a happy and friendly and light and gentle and positive relationship with food instead of getting stuck in the diet culture nastiness. So hello, how are you? We got all of our friends on here already. Hi. <laughs> so, so we are here to talk to you guys, hoping to inspire you guys to have breakfast with us, kind of hang out, chill out, and learn some positive things about food while you're snacking, while you're having your morning morning coffee while you're getting ready to start your day. Again, we're really, really diving into tangible takeaway things that you can really implement into your relationship with food to make it more empowering and make it more positive. If you get super, super stuck in terms of diet culture and feel like you're constantly stressing what you're supposed to be eating, how much, what time, what quantity, all of these rules that just ultimately freak you out, I've been there, I understand, I relate, and this is gonna be a really, really cool tool that we can use to build in a positive relationship with food. I can get started a little bit with my relationship with food. Um, I had a long topsy-turvy situation with all of that. So as you guys know, I now own a body positive fitness center in downtown Decatur, Georgia, and I freaking love it. And we're just building this tribe of people that really gets what we're here to do, that really, hi Crystal, that really understand body positive wellness, that understand that you can truly be healthy, your happiest, healthiest version of you without stressing the diet stuff, without feeling like you have to be forced into doing stuff that doesn't resonate with you. And that's why we're here to talk about food because the, the real cornerstone of a lot of this stuff has been food for a ton of people. Relationship with exercise is obviously hugely important, and if you ever want to talk about that, we are always here to chat about that, no matter what. So if you guys ever have any questions or are starting to feel like you're like stressed out about exercise, definitely keep us posted, and we can help with that as well. Hello, how are you? Hey, Abby, how are you? Good. We were just kicking it off. I did a little bit of an intro, but I have my my food here and everybody knows to be munching and crunching along with us. So this is going to be uh, awesome. Yes, I've got mine too. Yay. Can oh, yummy. Mm, delicious. <laughs> One of my favorite breakfasts. That's yeah, awesome. Banana. Yum. Perfect. Well, yay. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Again, this is Courtney, and she is a part of our Clarity Fitness team. She is doing her own nutrition support and nutrition counseling. She's a registered dietitian, but she is here to help out all of our Clarity Fitness members, as well as people that are just curious about her way of doing things. She is more than happy to help them out too, but we are working together to figure out a way to provide the Clarity Fitness members with a happy and positive and empowering relationship with food. And so she has agreed to jump on and help us out and tell us a little bit about her story and some really cool tricks to work with mindful eating and building that happy relationship. So I will kick it off to you. Awesome, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm just really glad to be here and have this opportunity. I'm an Instagram live newbie, so if I make any faux pas, you know, please forgive me. We're doing great. <laughs> okay. Um, so like Abby was saying, I'm a registered dietitian. I have been for six years now. I love it. It's a second career for me. And I work primarily in my private practice that I own with people who have disordered eating or eating disorders. Um trying to build a healthier relationship with food. Maybe you've been stuck in chronic dieting cycles for a long time or have had negative body image that's impacted their relationship with food for a long time. So that's kind of my um, specialty area. I love it because I, um, I just get to be like human with people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all in some way, we all have a relationship with food. True. So 
you know, we all are on that spectrum somewhere, whether it's super healthy and maybe we've worked on that or maybe just naturally that's kind of how it's been for us or, you know, we have to work really hard on that. We're not really quite there yet. We're still in the process of getting our relationship with food in a healthy place. Um, so let's see. So my story, my first career was also in food, but in the restaurant industry, I worked in corporate, sort of like corporate operations management for a restaurant group just in Pennsylvania, where I am from originally. Um, and I just realized I wanted to do something that would be helpful to people. In terms of my own journey, um, you know, I, I can't say that I've ever had an eating disorder. I have grown up in a culture, so of course we're all a little bit damaged <laughs> by diet culture and, you know, beauty standards and ideals of how we're supposed to look. Um, for us women, um, everybody really is affected by it, but we have a special kind of relationship with it. Um, so there's certainly work that I have done on spectrum in terms of when we place too much value on how we look, then we may not be living our lives according to our values, according to what's meaningful to us. And that can, of, of course, cause a lot of mental health issues. Um, we may be depressed, anxious, um, sad, because we know something isn't quite right, but we really don't know how to get out of that cycle. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm a nutritionist, I do a lot of sort of like therapy style coaching and counseling. That's um, where the mindful eating piece comes in. Um, do you want me to jump into that, or do you want to share, Abby, a little bit about your food journey? Sure. I can talk a little bit about mine. Um, I definitely... I resonate with the eating disorder population for sure. I was um, intensely struggling with food throughout college, but in developing my awareness of what a truly positive relationship with food looks like, it probably comes back closer to like fifth grade. I've been a very, very diet focused person for, or I was for a very, very long time and was doing a lot of tracking and counting and weighing and just stuff that isn't necessary and wasn't helping me and wasn't empowering me. It was stressing me out and freaking me out. So it was time to change and time to step back a little bit. And when I realized that I truly never needed to be on a diet again to take care of myself. That was like the biggest paradigm shift ever because I always associated diets and rigidity and rules and control and willpower as health and as what I'm supposed to be doing. So being freed and released from that not only completely transformed my life for a positive direction, but it really did helped me get closer to feeling better and get closer to the goals and the overall wellness that I was looking for. So it was just a win-win totally. And I yeah. love everything that you stand for and bring to the table and totally thank recommend it to everybody. So thank you so, so much again. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I'm so like, I just love how you worded that. Like we're you, like we are all sort of told we're supposed to be on a diet or we're supposed to be watching our, you know, pounds on the scale or calories in, calories out. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of like built into our culture as something that we're supposed to be doing. Right. We don't realize how harmful and damaging that is. Right. Um, so I'm so glad that you exist and that your business exists. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having like a body positive place to go move our bodies and be active that isn't focused on it, it's it's everywhere mm -hmm. I mean there's there's like nowhere you can go without it being somehow focused on like changing your body size or shape or right or how you look right um, so I'm just glad you exist and I support you. everything that you stand for as well thank you so much I love it it's been yes. it's been awesome getting to know you and I'm definitely excited for for people to to see this kind of conversation and again you guys can feel free to to ask questions as they come up we'll both be watching the comments and stuff but keeping it related to relationship with food stuff for right now so anything on that can totally help us kind of gear this next 20 minutes of our conversation in a way that's most beneficial to everybody but we're yeah. also going to really dive in now to tangible takeaways and tangible tools and things that you can really implement in your life that 
can help with your relationship with food. And we're both going to be munching and crunching. I have my favorite fancy rainbow spoon. So I'm going to be, I know, right? It was for my birthday stuff. <laughs> so we're going to be eating and talking and experiencing our food, hopefully alongside of everyone that's watching. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. So, um, yeah, I made this, um, I make this almost every morning, peanut butter toast with banana slices yeah. and very low key, low budge, like Kroger brand bread. We, I don't know where everybody is, but you know, in Atlanta, we have Kroger, um, Kroger peanut butter. Yes. <laughs> this stuff is so good. It's like so thin and creamy and like cheap as well. It's awesome. like dollars. So, um, it's all around. <laughs> but I'm enjoying here. Um, but yeah, so, okay, so I think that um, if we're talking about a healthy relationship with food, we have to acknowledge that people are coming from all different places with that. Mm -hmm, um, one of the things that can really bring us all together um, is mindful eating. So, being mindful is actually a really, really simple technique but that doesn't mean that it's easy. Mm -hmm. So I'll kind of define mindfulness first, and then we'll talk about how it relates to our whole eating experience. Awesome. So mindfulness is basically, the simple concept is bringing awareness to your current experience, mm -hmm. being objective and being curious and non-judgmental. So sounds really easy. Non-judgmental, <laughs> curious, seeing what is, but it's actually very, very difficult. Our brains don't really work that way. Uh, our brains are constantly judging and constantly putting meaning to things that we're experiencing. So we're sort of trying to like wipe the slate clean and just start with what, what is. Right. So we, with, with, let's say you're sitting in a room, mm -hmm. so the, the practice of mindfulness would say, just notice what is in the room. I notice a white bowl or I'm aware of a, kitchen faucet that's what I'm looking at right now <laughs> um, and I'm not judging whether the white bowl is you know attractive to me I'm not judging whether the kitchen is dirty or not and having thoughts about that and what that means I'm just noticing what is mm -hmm. so with our food um one of there's kind of two avenues we can go in the physical noticing and then the internal world noticing mm. so the physical noticing would be using all of our five senses to notice what it is that, that we're eating or the food experience. So mm -hmm. this can be the cooking, the prep, this can be the eating process, the chewing, the swallowing, this can be how the food feels in our body when we're eating or after we're eating, done eating. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not judging. So we're simply noticing, I notice through the, the sight, the sense of sight, there are you know bananas on my toast. What are you noticing, Abby? I'm noticing the sprinkles. I added sprinkles. I always add sprinkles. So I'm seeing the nice. colors. I'm seeing the little raspberry fuzzies. That's exciting. <laughs> like, and how bright and red the raspberries are. The texture and the consistency of the yogurt down there. Little details. I always, I get bored with granola. So sometimes I'll like chop up like a bar that I like. So I did that today. And they're kind of sparkly because there's some like honey and stuff to hold everything together in there. So seeing the glisten. Yeah, great. That's awesome. You did great. Thank you. <laughs> Noticed a couple of times you went to judgment and it wasn't a bad judgment. You judged something as positive, mm -hmm. but it was still a judgment, right? Mm, very so true. saying something like looks good. Mm. I know that's not, it sounds kind of weird that we wouldn't want to do that, but yeah, with cool. practicing mindfulness is, it's not good or bad. Right. So that really helps us in the food relationship because we can start to separate our concept of good and bad mm -hmm. from the food that we're eating. Mm, that's awesome. Um, so we can use our sight. We can use our sense of smell, right? So like we can smell something while it's cooking. We can smell something while um, it's baking mm -hmm. or we can hear something cooking. Texture that you were looking at it, but you can also feel the texture of something when you're holding it or when you're chewing it. So we're just being really present with it. The classic way of doing this, the classic um, little exercise, is with a raisin. Oh, so yeah. some people might have heard of that. Um, you take a, ra a single raisin, 
and you eat it mindfully with each of your senses. So you start, you know, by looking at it before you even touch it, and you notice the little crevices, you notice colored um, changes, you know, around the raisin. It takes a whole, like, 10 minutes to, do this <laughs> to eat one raisin. But it's a really good practice. Um, so that's, that's being mindful with your physical senses, with your food. Now, the harder part, the trickier part, but the more um, helpful part mm -hmm. is being mindful of your inner experience, so your thoughts and feelings mm -hmm. when you're eating. This is where a lot of our negative judgment will come in. Mm -hmm. So we may be feeling uh, guilty for what we're eating, or we may be feeling good for what we're eating, mm -hmm. right? We're being, we're being good today. We're eating something that diet culture has told us is good for us. Mm -hmm. um, we may have a feeling of dread when we're eating something that we're worried is going to cause our body to change in a way we don't want to see. Um, we may be having thoughts about what you're going to do to compensate for, mm -hmm. you know, this. So I need to work out a little bit more today because I'm eating this. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a lot of thoughts and feelings that are going on all the time. Mm -hmm. So the, the key is to give yourself some separation between yourself and those thoughts and feelings. So those thoughts and feelings are just creations of your mind. Mm -hmm. They're not reality. They're not facts. But if you've been listening to them for years and years and years, they feel like reality. They mm -hmm. feel like you, who you are and things that you have to follow. So um, to give yourself a little space, you can try word, uh, change in wording of your experience. So instead of saying, I am feeling guilty for eating this, mm -hmm. you can insert the phrase, I notice that I'm having the feeling mm -hmm. of guilt. Mm -hmm. So the key phrase is, I notice I'm having the feeling. Mm -hmm. You can do this with a thought as well. I notice I'm having the thought that I'm going to have to exercise more after I eat this. Mm -hmm. So you immediately, if you try it out, it's kind of amazing how, how immediate it works. You're immediately observing your thoughts instead of having your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So it allows you a little bit of breathing room to perhaps make a different choice to perhaps talk to yourself in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, some sort of action just to remind yourself um, if you are working on this journey, you're trying to, to be less influenced by those thoughts mm -hmm. that they're not real, mm -hmm. that they are creations of your mind and that you can, you don't have to follow them. You don't have to listen to what they're saying. Right. That makes sense. Definitely. That's awesome. That's usually helpful. And yeah, the raisin one I'd done before too. Um, I love, love, love that exercise and like squishing it between your fingers and you can feel yeah. it and like you taste it for a really long time, moved around your mouth and all of those sensory experiences that you really rush through when you're usually eating because you're just trying to like finish what's on your plate. Yeah. Absolutely. And I've had people that have done that say to me like, a couple of different things like some people will say I didn't even realize I don't like raisins mm -hmm. or you know after doing this exercise I realized how delicious raisins are mm -hmm. I've never paid attention before they're just that random fruit in the trail mix that I like <laughs> just eat but I actually really like them yeah. and they taste really good so I mean if, uh, if anything we get like a new relationship with a food that maybe you know we just never gave much thought to before right that's awesome yeah. I love that. So, yeah, I think just continuing to, to practice this, that's the other thing is that mindfulness with eating or with anything, mm -hmm. it, it's a practice. So no one has it down. No one's going to be able to do it perfectly all the time. Right. Um, especially if we are very emotional. Like if we are in a heightened emotional state, like we're very angry or we're very upset. Coronavirus <laughs> time is a perfect example of that. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes. So even those of us who have maybe been practicing mindfulness a lot are, are struggling this time at this time because it, everything is just kind of heightened. Everything's on edge. Mm -hmm. um, but the more we practice it when things are normal and calm, the easier it is to practice it when things are mm -hmm. So <laughs> a great example also is like an argument with like a friend or a partner. It's mm -hmm. really hard to, to separate emotions in those, in those times. Mm -hmm. Um, because you're so overwhelmed by them, but if you have a practice already in your back pocket that you've been doing, you know, with food or just with the general day, 
then it's a little bit easier to, to, you know, turn to that when you need to sort of like have a little space. Definitely. That's awesome. Yeah, there was, I remember I had heard a life hack that was like the, the word halt and it's like yep. happy, angry, lonely, tired. And if any of those emotions are kind of in the forefront, not that that's a bad thing at all, but just tuning in a little bit more and taking a second to get extra mindful instead of just rushing through the experience. And that one definitely helped me. That was yes. a really cool one. Yes, that's a great one. I'm glad you brought that up. Thanks. Yeah, and I think um, that sh- just goes to show, like, what's the point of being mindful? Well, it's to take valued and meaningful action. Right. That action sense mm-hmm. when when we're talking about a halt, we may be talking about a compulsive or an impulse to eat mm-hmm. or to use some other sort of harmful behavior. Mm-hmm. And if we do the halt practice, we can actually get into our bodies, into our experience and determine what I actually need in this moment. Right. So, you know, hung- hungry, of course, is the first one is, okay, eat something. That makes the, the most sense in this scenario. Mm-hmm. I'm angry, then eating something may kind of quell that temporarily. Mm-hmm. Or using some other behavior may quell that temporarily, but it may not actually address the deeper problem, and that just sort of pushes it down. Mm. So we may want to do something that acknowledges my anger. Like, when we're angry, often what we need is to just be heard and validated. Mm -hmm. So is there a person you can talk to, or even a journal you can write in, Mm -hmm. where you get it all out? Or can you pick up a pillow and scream into it? (laughs) (laughs) Just to get that energy out. Right. Loneliness, you know, if loneliness is the need that you have, how can you meet it Mm -hmm. with compassion um, and kindness for yourself? Mm -hmm. I think that's a really big one right now Mm -hmm. for us in in social distancing times. Definitely. We may be feeling lonely. Um, If anybody lives alone, um, you know, I live alone, so that's... Yeah, so how are you holding up with that? It's been weird. I've definitely, I feel like a lot of, A lot of the people that I've talked to, as well as myself, are aware of some stuff that we thought we had developed our relationship with food around, kind of creeping back in a little bit. And it's it's definitely the, even if you're not actively feeling lonely all the time, I feel like there are some underlying tinges of that, whether you're fully, fully aware of them all the time or not. And that's definitely the compassion and the curiosity has helped a ton instead of freaking out and just like buckling down or getting my heels in deeper. I feel like just that, that having grace for myself and being like, it's okay. Like if we eat less mindfully sometimes than others, we don't suck. <laughs> like, right, right. like having yeah, that that's, intention. Yeah. That's so great. I'm glad that you're, that you're, showing up for yourself that Thank way. You. Yeah. What about you? How has it been on your side? Yeah, it's been, you know, up and down. It's like a roller yeah, coaster. It really is. Um the emotions and the thoughts and not knowing what's coming. Mm-hmm. Um but I'm also grateful for a lot of things I do have. I'm mm-hmm. able to do my practice virtually. So that hasn't really taken a big hit, um, which is great. I know that so many people out there, you know, are suffering, mm-hmm. uh, losing their jobs or reducing their hours. Right. Um, I've got a dog. He's Yay. sleeping on the couch oh. here. <laughs> I'm in the early see. stages of puppy shopping, so you're going to have to teach me everything. <laughs> okay. I'm not the best at training. I didn't train him very well. He's 14, so I've had him oh, for 12 years. That's amazing. Um, and, you know, 12 years ago, I was just like, I just want a dog. Whatever. <laughs> but I didn't, like, train him. Oh, no. <laughs> He's potty trained. He was always potty trained. But, like, you know, he doesn't listen a lot to commands. Yeah, okay. It's fun. You know, he's, <laughs> he's fun. That's what matters. That's adorable. Um, yeah. But, I'm, but I've been doing okay. I think I've, yeah. you know, noticed as a person who, whose relationship with food has always been, like, fairly healthy, mm-hmm. you know, a little pops of weirdness you know here and there would come through like in college right. but um definitely noticing some things like the when all of this first started a little bit of fear coming up around food scarcity mm-hmm. which you know luckily I haven't really ever had to to deal with before right. but just the just the sense of it even mm-hmm. though we were being told like consistently the food supply chain is fine mm-hmm. there's plenty of food you still get this like 
kind of mental fear of like, I need to go, I can't eat too much or I need to save this or I need to hoard this or whatever. And that can definitely mess with you. Um, So yeah, so I got, I got over that pretty quickly. But that was (laughs) Tuned in. <laughs> what else, you know, if anyone else, you know, is, is experiencing that, what really helped me was I bought um, extra. Mm-hmm. So I bought, I make, I make sure that my kitchen, my fridge, my pantry have more than I normally do. Mm-hmm. So that gives me that extra padding. It gives me that sense of abundance. Mm-hmm. And then it gives me a little bit more freedom and relaxation to just say, like, what do I feel like eating right now? Yeah. I have a lot of options. And I'm gonna just choose whatever feels good. That's awesome. And that has really helped. Versus yeah. like normally I just kind of buy what I need for the week because I know I can always go out again if I need to. Right. That's I awesome. Lost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My last question before we have to close out is just wanting to know what your advice for someone who claims themselves as an emotional eater. I hear that little phrase all the time and it's something that people yeah. feel like is such a bad thing and something that people have a lot of shame for so if you could give a tool or takeaway or what you feel like is a happier healthier way to look at that what would that be yeah that's a great question mm-hmm. um we're all emotional leaders mm-hmm. Right. I mean, this is kind of like this misinterpretation that we should be just eating to fuel our bodies and that the only reason we should eat is if we're physically hungry. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, that message is can be really harmful as well, because if we didn't think about all of the things that we do with food that also have an emotional component. Right. All of our drinks with people we love, um, doing things like going to the movies or... um, going to restaurants, these things are going to be intertwined with emotions all the time. Right. So it's not that the emotional aspect of eating is bad. Mm -hmm. Here's what comes in though, that kind of, that I think gets people scared Mm -hmm. And, and it makes sense. If there's a, if there's an emotion that you're having and you're using something like food Mm -hmm. to cover it up, to soothe yourself so that you don't feel it, that's when it might become harmful mm. um, because we're not giving ourselves a space to actually feel that. Right. But what you're experiencing that's scary is the loss of control. Mm. So I think that this, again, is another thing that's easier said than done. But if we can learn to, to acknowledge our feelings, to validate our own feelings, which is often something that most of us don't re- didn't really get. Our culture doesn't really like... Uh, um, like to validate feelings we like to just sort of push them under the rug right negative feelings i mean um so if you're using food that's the that's the important word is if you're using food to um cover up an emotion Mm -hmm. or to numb or avoid Mm -hmm. then have compassion for yourself acknowledge that that's what's going on and see if you have a little bit of space using the techniques that i talked about earlier Mm -hmm. to name what's present to name the emotion that you are soothing now if you decide it's too painful i want to go eat that food to cover it up fine Mm -hmm. but at least you acknowledge what was going on for you in in that moment that's huge um and and then it just makes the experience of eating um for pleasure even more pleasurable Mm -hmm. because you're actually, it's like a pure enjoyment of the food versus using the food, which most people, if you ask them, are you actually tasting and enjoying, you know, the, that bag of Hershey kisses that you're eating in order to calm yourself down? Right. They'll say no. They didn't really remember the experience or really taste the food because it's being used at that point. Right. I think acknowledging the difference there is really important to expect yeah. that we're going to be like going out and not, um, it never having any emotion with food, that would mean that food wouldn't even taste good right. because pleasure is an emotion. Right. So we wouldn't have, we wouldn't get all that great stuff if we didn't have an emotional connection with food. That's so huge. And I love, I love that pleasure can truly be pleasurable. I feel like we have a lot of like, oh, this feels good. Like it must be bad. Or like, oh, I like this, like shouldn't do too much. Or like, like it's, Pleasure yes. has become a bad word, and that makes no sense. 
<laughs> is not a positive way to live your life. So allowing yourself, I love that you said allowing yourself to enjoy that pleasure. And if nothing else, make it more pleasurable. That's awesome. And takes the the stress of being stressed away from the equation. Exactly, exactly. We're meant to have pleasure. It's right. required into us. So why are we trying to run away from it so much? Right. That's awesome. Uh, I could have this conversation for days. You are amazing. I am so, so Thank happy. You. Absolutely. I'm so, so, so happy that you jumped in. And we're going to yeah. make sure that this is all over our story as well. But I would love for you to share who your ideal client would be, as well as where people can find you and work with you. Absolutely. So um, I have a private practice. It's 100% virtual right now. So, you know, um, that's been working really, really well, actually, better than I thought. Um, you can find me on my website, CourtneyClushNutrition.com. I don't have a social media presence, um, sadly, uh, right now, maybe in the future. Um, <laughs> But I know it's like a full-time job for some people. So, so true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and ideal client is really anybody who is has been struggling with their relationship with food on, on and anywhere on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, if you have concerns over your how you're using food, over body image, I love doing body image work with people and mm -hmm. really kind of digging into what that what that body image stuff is about. If you have concerns over bad or good foods, the right or wrong, black or white mindset, that's mm -hmm. something that I love working on with people. Um, and yeah, I think that kind of covers my ideal client. So Perfect. basically human beings <laughs> have a relationship with food they'd like to improve. That's yeah. awesome. Perfect. Well, yay. Well, thank you so, so, so much. This was awesome. I so appreciate yeah. you. I've been talking so much. I have barely eaten my food. I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, now Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed this. Absolutely. It was, I was a little scared my first live, but it worked really well, other than the little glitch. No, and I'm sure that that's my internet because we've been having all the adventures. So <laughs> we will make sure that that is better for next time. But yay, well, thank you so, so, so much. And we thank will you. make sure that this is shared to our page. And awesome. everybody gets to hear all your amazing advice. And if anybody has any questions, they'll reach out to you on your website. Yes, sounds great. Awesome. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. Bye.